I'm really excited to be doing this uh, video because I absolutely love this design and I'm going to be doing the reversible version of it there's two um, and the only difference uh, when making it is the order of the fabrics so I'm going to run through quickly what we're going to be using I'm using wash away stabilizer cut away floated on top um, this is purely optional I prefer to do it just because it supports the stitching once the wash away has been washed out um, matching thread and bobbin I'm only using one color today um, I'm actually making this one for myself and um, it's going in the middle of my lounge so I'm doing this golden yellow um, pins uh, to hold the pieces together when we join them uh, scissors and I've got I'm using uh, fleece batting and I've got all my fabrics cut to size and the fabric I'm using today is scuba I love it because it shows up such detail when you're using quite a thick um, batting before we get on with uh, hooping the stabilizer when we come to do the last heart to join the ring of hearts I'm going to be explaining how with the file C you can make this matching coaster to go with your placemat so we're going to start off by hooping the wash away stabilizer and now I'm going to pop that back in my machine and I'm going to stitch round number one which will give me the outline so now that that's stitched I just want to point something out to you I hope you can see this clearly we've got the first spike here and the center is going to be this hexagon here and once you've added the, um, the stitching it will be, become obvious that that is actually a hexagon so I'm going to start adding fabrics now I'm going to turn my hoop over and I'm going to place my uh, backing fabric on the back now uh, you do have to pay attention as to what uh, pieces of fabric you're using on this so this is my backing fabric which is five and a half by six and I'm going to tape that down so that it can't move during stitching now I'm going to turn my hoop back over so that the front is facing upwards I'm going to place a piece of cutaway stabilizer and as I said before this is completely optional over the top and then on top of that I'm going to add my first piece of batting and my top fabric which is I'm using the center spikes center and spikes which is five by six inches I want to make sure that all these layers are covering the the out the outer stitch line here. And then I'm going to tape that in place. Pop that in my machine and stitch round number two, which is going to secure all the fabrics and batting to the stabilizer. So to skip through the colours, as you can see I'm on colour number 3 at the moment, if I want to skip this to go to colour 4, which is this um, uh, stippling stitch in here, I've got three icons here, one says check colour, the other one is a needle with a plus and a minus and the other one is layout, so I'm going to press the middle one which is a needle with a plus and minus, then that gives me four icons to the right here. Uh, two cotton reels with a plus and a minus and two needles with a plus and a minus now the the needles move the uh, needle uh, stitching one stitch at a time either forwards or backwards and the cotton reels move through the colors either backwards or forwards depending on the plus and a minus so I'm going to press the cotton reel with a plus and that has now changed this to uh, round number four so I could now just put my hoop in 
and stitch that. As I'm actually um, showing how to add the fabrics, I'm going to go back to colour number three by pressing the minus, the cotton reel with the minus. And there we are, I'm back on number three and it's as easy as that. So I'm now going to pop this into my machine and stitch round number three. For those of you that are skipping through this colour, you can catch up with me in a minute. Before I start stitching any of the, stitch, uh, the stippling and quilting on the spike and the centre, I'm going to remove the fabric across here, otherwise it's going to get in the way when I go to do uh, round to number five. So I'm just going to trim this away. <laughs> and I'm going to trim it close to the stitch line like so and the other thing I like to do because your foot can get caught on um, fabric that doesn't uh, lay flat, I'm going to put a little bit of tape over where the joins are. So here and here. And that will stop, or should I say prevent any disaster. Okay, so I'm now going to pop this back in my machine and I'm going to stitch round number four, which is the quilting of the centre. Now I'm going to stitch round number five, which is the quilting on the spike itself. If you're not doing the reversible version of this, um, you would now add your backing. So you would turn this over and place it over the back, tape it down, and then you would stitch round number six. I'm not doing that because mine is going to be reversible. So as I showed you a minute ago, I'm now going to skip through the stitching and stitch round number seven. So if you've just attached your, your um, backing fabric with colour number six, uh, you're going to arrive at this point and it's here that we're going to trim all the excess fabric, batting, uh, cutaway stabiliser away from uh, the... Um, the center here uh, and we're going to trim right up to the stitch line so I'm just going to remove the, all the tape that I've got holding everything in place turn that over and do the same on the back and now I'm going to trim it up Okay, I'm going to make sure that this is trimmed uh, close to the stitch line off camera because it's going to take me a few minutes. And, and then I'm going to stitch round number seven, which is going to do the tip of the spoke and the join. I'm now going to free this from the hoop, so I'm going to turn it over and work from the back as I always do. And cut it all around the edge. Okay, if you've got any fabric, batting or anything else along these edges that's a bit long, you now is the time to trim them up and you want to make sure that you get as close to the stitching as you possibly can all the way around. It will make the difference between having a really neat finish and not. I've now hooped my wash away stabiliser and I'm now going to pop it into my machine and stitch round number one the outline. Because I'm doing the reversible stitching one so I want the stitching showing I'm going to turn my hoop over and I'm going to add my backing fabric now. If you're doing um, the uh, option two 
you will add it on a little bit later on. So I'm just going to place my fabric so that um, all the outline is covered. And I'm putting it at a slight angle because it gives me a little bit more room with my fabric. Let's make sure that that whole outline is covered. And I'm now going to take that in place. I'll turn it over and I can see from here that the outline is covered properly. So now I'm going to add my cutaway stabilizer on top of that and my batting. I'm now going to pop that into my machine and stitch round number two. Now that's attached I'm going to put my fabric for the spoke over this area here like so and I'm going to tape it in place. Okay, I'm now going to put that in my machine and stitch round number three. I'm now going to trim up the fabric along this stitch line here. And then I'm going to lay my, my heart fabric over the top. And I'm going to tape it in place. And now pop that in my machine and stitch round number four. Once again I'm going to trim up along this line um, the excess fabric. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape here just to avoid my foot getting caught up anywhere. And now pop that in my machine and stitch round number five which is going to do the quilting on the spoke. I'm now going to stitch round number six which is the quilting on the heart. Next we're going to trim away all excess batting, fabric, stabiliser both back and front. So I'm going to start off on the back. Let's trim up all these threadies. If you haven't added the back already now is the time to do so and you're going to stitch round number seven to secure it. If you're doing the reversible uh, with the stitch showing then you're going to skip straight to round number eight and that's going to do um, the uh, zigzagging around the edge and it's going to stop somewhere around here so that we can add the previous piece onto it like so. Now comes the joining. Okay, take your um, first piece, your first segment and you're going to butt it right up to the second segment so that the stitch line of that one lines up with the stitch line of the second piece and then you're going to tape or pin it in place. Now if you're using pins make sure that they're completely out of the way of the stitch area because otherwise they can catch in your machine and do an awful lot of damage. If you can get away with tape then tape is the way to go so I'm just going to place another pin a little bit further up here. The stitch line is going to be here so, so I know that it's well out of the way and not going to come to any mischief there. And this little piece here I'm going to tape. I'm going to push that right up there so that it's the actual um, stitch line of this one is sitting directly on top of the stitch line of the one underneath. I'm going to give you a little tip. If you're not sure about joining or you find it difficult, what you can do is the join is always done with a zigzag. You can stitch that line first so you can see exactly where it's going to, uh, to go. Place your piece on top and then re-stitch the same um, zigzag line. In this case it would be number nine. But Next I'm going to stitch round number ten which is going to do this join along here. If you're using a different thread colour for your satin stitching now is the time to change your uh, thread and your bobbin of course. So here we go with round number ten. I 
and next round number 11 which is going to do the satin stitch all around the heart edge we're now going to free this piece from the hoop so I'm going to remove my pins and tape I'm going to turn it over trim up these threadies and cut it out of the hoop what you're going to need to do next is make sure that along these edges here there and there that they're trimmed up as close as possible to the stitch line as you can just so that you get a nice neat join when you add this to your next pieces so we're staying with file B we're going to do the next heart in the, exactly the same way so same stitching same joining everything as we did for the previous one I've hooped my wash away stabiliser I'm going to load this into my machine and stitch round number one the outline I'll turn my hoop over I'm going to add my backing fabric over the outline of the heart and take it in place turn it over make sure that uh, it's completely covering the outline then I'm going to add my cutaway stabilizer on top of that I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to stop it from moving around while I uh, stitch I'll put that along there and the piece along the top here I'll place my batting down over the top as well put a little bit of tape just to hold that in place I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number two which will secure it now I'm going to place my fabric over the spoke and tape it in place And now put that in my machine and stitch round number three. So now I'm going to trim up my fabric along this stitch line here. And I'm going to place my heart fabric on top. A bit of tape to keep it from moving while it's being stitched. And now put that in my machine and stitch round number four. So now we're going to trim up around here. I'm going to pop that into my machine and I'm going to stitch around number five, which is going to do the quilting in the spoke. Next it's round number six, and that's the quilting on the heart. It's now time to trim all the excesses off of the uh, heart. So I'm going to remove all the tape. and off the back as well okay um, if you were adding a back now would be the time to do it and stitch it down with round number seven I'm going to forward through uh, colour 7 and go straight to colour 8. I'm going to show you the other way of lining up your joins. We're next going to stitch round number 9 which normally you would um, use to stitch the 
um, previous pieces to this one but rather than do that I'm going to stitch it and then I set my machine to go back and re-stitch round number nine so now that's stitched I put my set my machine back to stitch round number nine again so now you can see exactly where your your um, first piece must sit within that stitch line there so line it up to the bottom and as long as you can see the very edge of that zigzag there you know that it's going to be in the right place and be stitched properly so I'm going to take a pin line this up pin well out of the way and the same for here I can just about see the edge there so I know that that's going to be joined properly So I now pop that back in my machine and stitch round number nine again. There you are, check that out how that's stitched. So next is round number ten which is going to do the join between the hexagon and the spoke. And now number eleven which is the satin stitch around the heart. that stitched I can remove this from the hoop again and there's the two hearts joined and we're going to do exactly the same for number three four and five I've hooped my wash away stabiliser. I'm going to load this into my machine and stitch round number one the outline. I'll turn my hoop over. I'm going to add my backing fabric over the outline of the heart and take it in place. Turn it over make sure that uh, it's completely covering the outline then I'm going to add my cutaway stabilizer on top of that I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to stop it from moving around while I uh, stitch I'll put that along there and the piece along the top here I'll place my butting down over the top as well put a little bit of tape just to hold that in place I'll pop that in my machine and stitch round number two which will secure it now I'm going to place my fabric over the spoke and tape it in place now put that in my machine and stitch round number three so now I'm going to trim up my fabric along this stitch line here and I'm going to place my heart fabric on top a bit of tape to keep it from moving while it's being stitched I now put that in my machine and stitch round number four so now we're going to trim up around here 
I'm going to pop that into my machine and I'm going to stitch around number five which is going to do the quilting in the spoke. Next it's round number six and that's the quilting on the heart. It's now time to trim all the excesses off of the uh, heart. So I'm going to remove all the tape. And off the back as well. Okay, um, if you were adding a back, now would be the time to do it and stitch it down with round number seven. I'm going to forward through uh, colour seven and go straight to colour eight. It's time to join our last pieces to this one. So once again, lining it up, stitch line on top of stitch line and pinning it in place. I'm going to add a little bit of tape just down on this end to keep it flat not too close because I don't want it zigzagging into the tape I'll pop that in my machine and stitch around number nine I'm now going to stitch the uh, hexagonal join and that's round number ten and now uh, the satin stitch around the heart round number 11 I'm now going to free this from the hoop and that's my third heart complete I've hooped my wash away stabiliser. I'm going to load this into my machine and stitch round number one the outline. I'll turn my hoop over. I'm going to add my backing fabric over the outline of the heart and take it in place. Turn it over. Make sure that uh, it's completely covering the outline. Then I'm going to add my cutaway stabilizer on top of that. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to stop it from moving around while I uh, stitch. I'll put that along there. And the piece along the top here. place my batting down over the top as well put a little bit of tape just to hold that in place I'll put that in my machine and stitch around number two which will secure it now I'm going to place my fabric over the spoke and tape it in place Now I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number three. So now I'm going to trim up my fabric along this stitch line here. And I'm going to place my heart fabric on top. A bit of tape to keep it from moving while it's being stitched. And I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number four. So now we're going to trim up around here. I'm going to pop that into my machine and I'm going to stitch around number five, which is going to do the quilting in the spoke. Next it's round number six and that's the quilting on the heart. It's now time to trim all the excesses off of the 
at heart. So I'm going to remove all the tape. And off the back as well. Okay, um, if you were adding a back, now would be the time to do it and stitch it down with round number seven. I'm going to forward through uh, colour 7 and go straight to colour 8. So now we're going to join our previous piece to this one. I'm going to put that back in my machine and stitch round number 9 to join them. Next is round number 10 that's going to do the satin stitch along the hexagonal join. Next is a satin stitch all around the heart and that's round number 11. So now time to free it from the hoop. And there is heart number four. I've hooped my wash away stabilizer. I'm going to load this into my machine and stitch round number one the outline. I turn my hoop over. I'm going to add my backing fabric over the outline of the heart and take it in place. Turn it over. Make sure that uh, it's completely covering the outline. Then I'm going to add my cutaway stabilizer on top of that. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to stop it from moving around while I uh, stitch. I'll put that along there and the piece along the top here. I'll place my butting down over the top as well. Put a little bit of tape just to hold that in place. I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number two, which will secure it. Now I'm going to place my fabric over the spoke. And tape it in place. And I'll put that in my machine and stitch round number three. So now I'm going to trim up my fabric along the stitch line here. And I'm going to place my heart fabric on top. bit of tape to keep it from moving while it's being stitched. I now put that in my machine and stitch round number four. So now we're going to trim up around here. I'm going to put that into my machine and I'm going to stitch around number five which is going to do the quilting in the spoke. Next it's round number six and that's the quilting on the heart. It's now time to trim all the excesses off of the uh, heart. So I'm going to remove all the tape. And off the back as well. Okay, um, if you were adding a back, now would be the time to do it and stitch it down with round number seven. I'm going to forward through uh, 
colour 7 and go straight to colour 8. It's now time to join this piece to here. So I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to pop some tape on here because it's rather heavy with all these pieces so I want it to stay nice and flat. I'm now going to put that back in my machine and stitch round number 9 to join them. Next is the um, satin stitch over the hexagonal edge and that's round to number 10. And now the satin stitch on the heart. Now going to free this from the hoop. We've now reached the last segment to this placemat and during its making I'm going to explain to you how to make the matching coaster and we'll do that as we go along. So as before I've hooped my wash away stabiliser I'm now going to pop it in my machine and stitch round number one. I'm going to turn my hoop over and I'm going to place the backing fabric over the heart and tape it down. I'm now going to place my cutaway stabiliser down and I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to hold that in place because it tends to slide. Then I'm going to place my batting on top and then my top fabric on top of that. And I'm going to tape that in place. So now I'm going to pop that into my machine and stitch round number two. Next is the quilting, so I'm now going to stitch round number three. If you're doing the coaster, you would put the backing on if you haven't done already and stitch round number four or if you're doing the reversible one like I am then you would trim away all the excess front and back now and then put it back in your machine and stitch round number nine so you skip through right through till number nine I'm doing the placemat so I'm not going to do that but what I am going to do is trim up all the excess now. Okay, so for the coaster you go straight to, number, to round number 9 now. But if you're putting a backing on, now is the time to do it. For the placemat we're going to round number four and that's going to do the zigzagging across the top of the heart. We're now going to join this piece to the heart and I'm going to line it up very carefully so that both um, stitch lines um, marry up over the top of each other. First off it's going to join the left side and that was with round number six. Next we're just going to stitch the travel run which will take us round to the other side here where it's going to do the second join. So this is just round number seven. 
Next is round number eight and that's going to join this edge here and next is round number nine which is the satin stitch border around the last heart okay that's the last one stitched it's now time to free this completely from the hoop If you can hear snoring in the background, it's baggy. <laughs> okay. Okay, all that remains now is to dissolve all the wash away stabilizer from around the edge and from the joins, and then that will be it. So I've got a cotton bud here, just dipped in some warm water. I'm just going to run it around the edge. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos as they're published. Thank you very much for joining me.